Hello? Hello! Good morning, friends! How's everyone doing? Sweet, I got the video today. I got the, the sign video. I did. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. Hi, Michelangelo. Good to see you. Somehow this always gets turned after stream. It must be when I turn it off. It always gets switched around. Hopefully everyone had a wonderful day or night yesterday after our stream together. What did we make yesterday? Oh, the chicken. Oh man, that chicken after stream when I finished it, so good. And then we got really good reviews from Zach and his family and they loved the green sauce so much that they want us to like make it for them more often. Just want to put it on everything. Oh, nice. You're out for a short hike. Enjoy. Yeah, we're going to try and get outside a little bit later today. The sun is shining. Super nice out. And we just looked at the forecast today for the upcoming week and we should be like sunny skies for the next two weeks. So that's really good news for planting the garden. Whoop, whoop. That's why everything's been popping up. I don't know if you guys saw 
I posted in Discord in the gardening channel there, our little update on my seed trays. Also, yes, still working on coffee. It's delicious. So, so good. Okay, so Jewish foods today. This is something we don't make very often on stream. And yeah, we have a little bit of stuff to learn before we get started. We ended the stream yesterday by making the poolish for our bagels. So the poolish is like a little quick version of a sourdough starter. So you mix together flour, water, and yeast, and that is your poolish, it's called. And then you let that just sit on your counter. I did it for about six hours. I mixed up the dough at like nine o'clock last night before I went to bed. So then it gets all bubbly. I don't know if you guys saw that, but it looked great. And so what the poolish does when we do that step is it creates more flavor in the bagels and structure in the dough. And bagels are definitely like a pretty hard one to master on the first time. Okay, so there was, that's how the poolish looked when I added it into the dough yesterday. It looked so bubbly and good. And so after that is I just put the dough into the fridge to proof overnight. This morning, I took the dough out around eight o'clock. So three hours ago. And then I did like one fold, it's called with the loaf or with the dough. So that's also creating a bit of structure as it said to do that in the recipe before we even go shape it later. So I got the beautiful bagel dough right here. It's looking great and it's feeling really nice too. Morning strike nun, how are you? How did your baking catastrophe go yesterday? Okay, so we have our recipes linked here. So the first one is the latkes. And we can work on the latkes while we're like in between our bagel portioning and stuff like that. It was awful. Oh my goodness. I'm so sad to hear that. You had to rebake all of it. That is so crazy. Yeah, I guess you can't just be like, well, that's it for the day. You have to actually like make more bread. Okay, so this bagel recipe that we're making today, it is from King Arthur Flour. Really, really awesome site for anything baking related. This is a first for us, Martin Philippe's Bagels. He is the head bread baker at King Arthur Flour. So this is his recipe. It says bagels are the zany misfit member of the baked goods family. I think that's such a good way to put it. And he says this recipe has a lengthier timeline. So yes, it does take two days for sure, but the wait is well worth it to let the flavor develop. So I'm like super excited to try this. Okay, so now our next step, obviously we have to start preheating our wood fired oven outside, AKA our big green egg with the pizza porta attachment onto it. So that's what you saw outside at the start of the stream before I came on. Strike then you worked 4 a.m. to 12 and then 2 p.m. to 8 and then 4 a.m. to 1.30. I feel like you don't get paid enough for this. Morning, White Dove. The chicken was freaking delicious. I'll show you the photo. It was so good. Mm -mm -mm. Green sauce. Really? A lot better than last time we did it. Let's just say that. Good morning, Suzanne. Yeah, the char flavor with like the spices and stuff that was rubbed on the chicken, amazing. Okay, so yes, we have to preheat the grill outside and whenever we're making bagels is they get cooked at a really high heat. So we're aiming for around like anywhere between 450 Fahrenheit and 500 Fahrenheit. They did enjoy it, yeah. Yeah, Peruvian green sauce. They loved it so much that they asked us either for the recipe or if we could make it for them. So good, yeah. 
it's a win. <laughs> a must do. They loved the rice, they loved the salad, they loved everything. That was a good one. Okay, so our dough is finished the bulk proof stage, which it's always called bulk proofing when we're leaving it in this whole dough ball. So that's the bulk proof. That's usually how a bread or any type of dough starts. That's your first proofing. And next, so we're gonna divide the dough into 12 equal pieces. Love that it makes a dozen bagels, that's perfect. And it says if you have a scale, each piece will weigh about 114 grams. So that'll be interesting to see if we made the dough properly and it does come out to that weight. Then that'll make me feel good. And it says after you have your 12 pieces, shape each piece into a tight ball and then we let the dough relax a little bit before we go any further. And I think all of these little steps are really, really important. And that's how you can tell like these delicious home baked or like artisan bakery bagels compared to like a Dempster's bagel that is basically just a bun. <laughs> Twitch Stewie, good to see you. So our bagels should have like, the exterior should be really chewy and kind of crusty and then the in interior of the bagel should be like really soft and fluffy. You'll save the recipe for your new grill. Are you getting an egg? Has it been ordered? Okay, after we let our dough relax, then we can start shaping the bagels. So this is the interesting part of this recipe. So they don't roll the bagel into a rope and then make your round, is they actually just poke a hole through the dough, which I don't know if we're gonna do that. I've never done it that way. And then they have to rest a little bit more before they go into the oven. And then typically bagels bake for around like 15-ish minutes. But first, before they even bake, so this is also I think why a lot of people don't make bagels at home. Before you even bake the bagel, you have to boil it in sweetened water. And that's what creates your exterior on the bagel. It hasn't been ordered yet. It's your reward for finishing the barn. Oh, amazing. Hey, that's the best way to like get something pretty expensive is to work towards it and like set a goal to get yourself there. Cause then it's like double the reward. That's awesome. Okay, so that's our bagel stuff for today. And then our latkes, our recipe is from Serious Eats. It's called Old Fashioned Latkes Recipe. The only thing that I don't have for this is the matzo meal, but I read down in the comments on this recipe and people switched it out for AP flour and it worked. So that's what we're gonna do today instead. So not the most traditional Jewish, I'm sorry friends, but as close as I can get. It says great latkes take some time and preparation, but with the right technique and tools, they're easy to master. And then you can also make them ahead of time and keep them warm. It says these ingredient, ingredient amounts aren't law. Depending on the moisture content of your potato, you may need more or less binder or a different balance of eggs and matzo meal. What's important is that the latke doesn't fall apart in your hands or they certainly will in the pan. Start with a little bit of egg in your binder and then only add as much as you need. You're gonna try their shaping method or the traditional way for the bagels. I wanna do it the traditional way because that's always worked out for us. And I just love that way. Why are we shutting it down? Why am I getting yelled at right now? Okay. Let's see how long these latkes take. 
So it makes 16 latkes active time, one hour. So we're gonna be active the entire time we're making the latkes, start to finish one hour. So let's keep that in mind. <laughs> Sammy's like, not today, friends, not today. And then I'm gonna estimate the grill will take about 45-ish minutes to heat up for our wood-fired oven to prep the bagels, which should actually fall right into place for like all of our shaping and waiting times. And then we'll make the latkes after, I think. Or if we do have a little bit of time, we can start prepping them like in between, I think. It's all about timings today, let's just say that. And let it be known that this is Om Dog's channel point redemption for his 50K channel points on Twitch. Cross that one off the list. So going with our everything bagel, good morning, Steam and Tig. I'm sure she's there with you. So Sammy wanted salmon locks. He wanted cream cheese. He wanted tapers. I'm going to put some dill on there. And then we also have some crispy pork belly in the fridge that maybe Sammy will make like a breakfast sandwich bagel. Yum. Okay, so here's the menu. That's what we're gonna start working on. And then last thing on stream today is injecting the turkey for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, Sammy wants all of the things, all of them. Don't you know it, Steam? Suzanne, we could do some pickled red onion. Yep, yep, yep. That's a thing. I have that in the Morning, fridge. Steve. Okay. Let's get into these bagels. Yeah, Sammy's just giggling. So nice. Da, 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 da. Is it gonna focus? I think it just wants to focus on the bowl. Once I get my hand in there though, we'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna do this on my cutting board here. How pork belly stays in our fridge for any length of time, yeah, is mind blowing. <laughs> it's vac packed. Like one of those things that we just like pulled out of the freezer just in case. There she is. Clean bowl. Yeah, this dough just feels amazing. Might be the best one yet. Okay, should we test this scale? The weight, it's at about 114 grams. So yeah, if we like poke it, just like bounces right back, that's how you know your dough is ready. I think Strike Nun would be proud of this dough. I think we've created really nice structure in it. Okay, so I'm going to divide it in half lengthwise. Yeah, I just wanna like bake this right now. Just throw it in the oven, bake it like this. Because honestly, has anyone made like a bagel loaf? No, there's pretzel buns and stuff, but there's no bagel bread. And as you can see, I'm not really adding any flour here because we don't typically need it with this style of dough is it doesn't really stick to the board or anything like that. And we do want that little bit of friction to get the proper shaping. You're saving your judgment for when we portion it to see how many we get. Ah! <laughs> okay, so we need 12 pieces. Divide it in half again. 
<laughs> and then we'll cut each of those into three. I am. I'm just doing my guesstimating first. Okay. I won't cheat. I'll put the scale up here. <laughs> at least for the first one. Tear it. So 114. Something like that. Close. Ooh. Okay, so that was the first one. I'm just going to keep cutting these or portioning them, but I'm going to put this on the side because I'm going to run out of room real quick. But that is like our rough size of ball that we're looking for, so we can just use our best judgment here. One ten. 132. So now we know we can take a little bit off of here. Oh no. <laughs> ah! The dough is like sticking to my knives. It fell in front. I really am liking the feel of this though. That one's a bit small. So it was this one that was bigger. 16. Looks like 1400 grams of dough. <laughs> the pressure. Good morning, Nike. How are you? That one's a bit small. That one's going to be big for sure. So what does this mean then, strike none? If I have a little bit extra weight, compared to what it's calling for? What does that mean? And now I'm just going to divide the rest of this little bit of excess onto the balls that look a touch small. Do that one. More bagels for us. Okay. So it doesn't mean I did anything wrong then. That's all I was really looking for. I thought maybe it meant that I like over mixed it or something like that. So I did good then. That's what we're, we're trying to get at. Okay. So if you guys can remember back to two days ago when we were balling our hot cross buns, we're going to do our same thing here now. Is it 11? Did I not? It's true. Maybe it is the exact thing then. I'm terrible. I am terrible right now. Okay, well, I'm committing to this because I'm not going to take that little bit off of each one. Test the baker though. <laughs> okay. That just means bigger bagels for us, I guess. They're artisan. That's all you got to put though, right? They're artisan. Okay, so there's our ball. That's why the last piece of dough was like 170. I was like, this doesn't make sense. That big bubble there, 
That's what we don't want. We're trying to like get the really big bubbles out. Otherwise it's just gonna blow up in our bagels later on. Okay, so after these are shaped, then we let the dough relax for another 15 minutes. So I think we can tell Sammy to start up the grill. I think it's time. Teaching people this technique is easily the hardest thing you have to do with new employees. It took a bit for me to get, that's for sure. And yeah, the only thing you really can do is practice. It is a hard one. I mean, you really just have to get the feel of the dough in your hands. You teach them to do both at the same time. Yeah, I always say that's like the, the sign of a really good baker. You can ball dough with both hands. Yeah, slave driver, strike none. I expect nothing less, actually. I mean, it's really quite simple, is like you keep the dough like on whatever, the palm of your hand there for friction, and then we're just pushing with our thumb and pulling in like a circular motion with our other fingers. And I mean, it's just really important to have enough friction as well because this would be really hard to do if there was way too much flour on the board is the dough ball would just slide around last one Did you hear the little dough toot? Chew. All right, we have 11 bagels. <laughs> and I'm just gonna cover those with a little tea towel for now. Why don't I use this fun one? Sammy got this for me a long time ago. Has like all of these cooking related things on it. Tuck that in, and now I'm gonna set a 15 minute timer. You thought it was Sammy? <laughs> huh. Hey Siri, 15 minute timer. Yeah, nappy time. Thank you. It is time to light the oven. Did we prepare the dough yesterday? We did, we did. So I mixed up the poolish with everyone on stream. So that was like our pre-ferment or our little bit of starter. And then I let that sit for about six hours on the counter yesterday. And then I mixed up the dough at like 9 p.m. last night. And now here we are. So I took the dough out at 8 a.m. this morning. So it had like three hours to come up to temp and I got one fold onto the dough as well during that time just to create a little bit more structure in it. And I think that really, really helped. So yeah, bagels, definitely a labor of love. And let's do a little bit of learning while we're waiting. Okay, so a bagel is a bread product originating in the Jewish communities of Poland. Super cool. 
because honestly, I had no idea where they actually came from. It's traditionally shaped by hand in the form of a ring from yeasted wheat dough, roughly hand size. It's first boiled for a short time in water and then baked. The result is a dense, chewy, doughy interior with a brown and sometimes crisp exterior. Bagels are often topped with seeds baked on the outer crust. We are definitely doing seeds and some flavoring. So I have some of this lovely stuff, everything but the bagel spice that we'll be putting on it. And typically, yes, it's poppy or sesame seeds. And then some may even have some salt. Though the origins of bagels are somewhat obscure, it's known that they were widely consumed by Ashkenazi Jews from the 17th century. The first known mention of the bagel in 1610 was in Jewish community ordinances in Krakow, Poland. Yeah, do you mean gluten smog? <laughs> Hi, Vian. How are you? So bagels are now a popular bread product in North America, especially in the cities with a large Jewish population, many with alternative ways of making them. Like other bakery products, bagels are available in many major supermarkets in those cities. But this bagel is not going to be your Dempster's bagel. I'm doing good, Vune. Thanks for asking. Yep, got up early this morning, did my stretch, I had some coffee, did a little bit of AC. It's been good, sun's shining. Another great day. So the basic roll with a hole design is hundreds of years old and has other practical advantages besides providing more even cooking and baking of the dough. The dough could be used to thread strings or dowels through groups of bagels, allowing easier handling and transportation and more appealing cellar displays. Oh my gosh, I have a dowel. I'm going to grab it or I'll get Sammy to grab it from the work van. Is I literally went to the hardware store and got like a little really nice wooden oak dowel to use in the kitchen here. But I've been like hiding it away for some reason totally going to use our dowel today to like stack all of our bagels onto it. Yes. You went shopping for Asian groceries today, came across a spice you had never seen before. Asafoetida. I have heard of that before. It's an Indian spice. Bought it, opened it at home. You swear it's the foulest thing you've ever smelled in your entire life. This includes durian, sewage and rotting animal corpses. I have heard of that. I think I used it in culinary school at some point. It's those weird words that like stick into your head. It's so bad for you. Do you know what they use it for? Okay. So then most of us would know like the New York style bagel. That's the most popular, I would say, almost everywhere, especially in the United States. So the New York bagel contains salt and malt and is boiled in water before baking in a standard oven. The resulting bagel is puffy with a moist crust. And then we have the Canadian one. So the Montreal, Montreal style, different from the New York. The Montreal style bagel contains malt and sugar with no salt. It's boiled in maple syrup sweetened water before baking in a wood fired oven. So we would probably call these, I don't even know, a mix of everything because we're baking it in a wood fired oven, but I know that they're not going to be flat like the Montreal style bagels. It smells like an egg that was cooked for an hour and then left in the sun for two days. Oh no. It's used as an animal repellent. Yeah, but also in Indian cuisine. Tiny pinch is fried up in oil, then other spices are added. Huh, interesting. So 
So yeah, we'll just call these the Sammy Bagel today. Wood fired and fluffy and chewy and crusty. Okay. We're going to call it the Sammy Bagel. Crusty? No, because it's just a mix of everything. Oh, oh Nike says you're crusty. Wow. In the good way, though? Is, it, is there a good way to be crusty? With chew, yeah. Did you start the egg? Okay. We would like to start the egg, please. Oh. Yep. I thought maybe you heard it when you were listening, but you did not. Hello. Pitmaster, yes, I would like you to start your shift now. Oh. Thank you. Okay, we're going to pop outside for a sec. Yeah, it means you got sustenance and determination. You grind through life. Look at that setup. Oh, green sunshine. He's digging down for all the charcoal. And so if I remember clearly, guys, is the last time we did bagels on stream is that it didn't really work out the best. So let us pray that today works out a bit better. Remember the stone got way too hot and it was burning the bottoms? Because your temperature gauge is off on that. Remember that. Oh, okay, maybe it was pizzas. <clears throat> Sammy flinging them off. Okay, so he's gonna load that up with charcoal. What do you say about halfway? He's going more than that. He needs some scissors. I'm gonna do a double view for us so we can keep going here. Let's do this. So while we wait for the grill to heat up, We're going to fill up our pot of water for boiling the bagels and then get our little bit of sweetener into there. Sammy's a beast out there. Yeah, he is. How's it going, Trey? Try away. So I have this big pot on the stove today. I found that this would probably be the best because we can probably fit three bagels in here at one time for boiling. So I'll fill this up just over halfway with some hot water. And then we have to add some barley malt syrup to it. Let me just look at the recipe here. We need two tablespoons of barley malt syrup and one tablespoon of salt. This will be a first for me adding the salt into the boiling water. So this is what we're looking for. I think I ordered this off Amazon. So barley malt, organic. 
literally just organic sprouted barley and water. Hello, Aaron. How are you, man? You guys staying safe? Give Winston a hug for me. Yeah, you can definitely make beer with that. That's what it reminds me of, is it always brings me back to Big Rock. It always reminds me of the smell of them brewing beer in the morning. Pour a little bit of that water out. It won't be great beer, but it'll be beer. Yeah, your life hasn't changed much. Go to work, go home. That's nice that you're still able to work though. The grill started up. I can't open this. <laughs> Send help. What do we got on our timer? Two minutes. Okay. We're gonna switch back into here for the next half an hour or so. Boop. The smoker setup's insane. Yeah, we've built it up over the years. The side hustle is nice, but yeah, we've got bills to pay. That's the thing, right? That's why you got a side hustle though. That's like one thing you get to enjoy. Okay, so two tablespoons of our barley syrup. So sticky. And that's pretty much the only thing I ever use that stuff for is when we make bagels. I think it's pretty expensive though, that little jar. And then a tablespoon of salt. So our water is definitely seasoned now. Now, we wait. I'm gonna come back over here. We'll do a little bit more learning. Actually, no, we won't, because our timer is about to go off. But we are gonna start working into our latkes. Who, in chat, has had bagels and or latkes in their lifetime? There she is. Bagel, yes. Latka, latka? <laughs> no, so latka is like a Jewish potato pancake. Yes, you have strike men. I would love it if someone was like, yes to both. Taka Jedna, thank you for the follow. What's Sammy doing out there? Let's see, what's he doing? Yeah, who hasn't had a bagel, we ask. Who, who hasn't? Lord knows, you've had both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sam Cam, trademark. I think he's figuring out his, his situation there. Oh my gosh, Scooter Bead, you're running outside to do yard work before it snows tonight? I am sorry, dude. Here is our menu today. Bagels are traditionally boiled before baking. Yeah, you kind of just missed our little history lesson on bagels. <laughs> 
Never forget the time the two of you guys showed up at Big Rock after a workout with a giant box of donuts at like 9.30 in the morning. Dude, I don't even remember that, but that is amazing. I'm somewhat of a donut fiend, that's for sure. Lye is involved. If you can get your hands on it, Dentity, but otherwise it's typically barley malt. Yeah, 9.30 p.m. with donuts. <laughs> Y'all want some donuts? Okay, so Sam's got the setup there. So he has the one thing there is called the plate setter. And then he puts the grill rack on top of that. So that's what makes it like an oven. So it's indirect cooking. And then we'll be putting the pizza stone or baking stone on top of that. And that's how we're gonna bake the bagels. Hey, let's come to the cutting board. And then we'll start shaping up these bagels. Cause they're looking really good. Yeah, we're doing channel point redemption today on stream for the Om Dog. That's what he used his 50K for. You're looking for a new smoker. Have we always had green eggs? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I guess I would ask you, Scooter Beach, is like what you would mainly be using the smoker for. Like what kind of things do you want to smoke? And how much work do you want to put in? Yeah, and how much work do you want to put in? Because these are a lot of work. That's the thing is you have to maintain them and yeah, they take a lot of energy and time. Okay, so they said for shaping the bagels is to just like poke a hole through the center with your thumb and like open it up. But I have always, it's a little bit sticky still, rolled it into a rope and then you put the rope into a circle and make the bagel that way. Yeah, work, who's gonna do that? I'm gonna switch this. Cause I will get better friction on my wooden board. So we are trying to get some of the bubbles out of this right now. Like that, Sam? More? Longer? How long do you go? Like 12 inches? And then we take our three fingers, flip, flip, roll to that one side, close the steam, roll to the other side. We have the cutest little bagel. This is really small. I'm glad I made the dough bigger. How long do you do for? Uh, it'll be like pretty perfect for your timing on the, the oven. But if I need to, I can put them in the fridge Hello. if we're done early. Hi, Mickey. How are you? I was wondering how much, just maybe stretch it just a bit more to get a bigger stick. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna try and go a little bit longer with the rope so we can get a little bit bigger bagel. All is well there, that's good. It's so floofy. One more. And I mean, we don't even have to flip it over that much. That could have been my other issue here. Is that we just closed it up too tight. That's better. And then Sam, do you want, what do you want underneath, semolina? But uh, we'll do that after it's baked or boiled. 
You kept your old smoker for 10 years, so you tend to upkeep them. You do mostly like meats for two people. You like to do pork, chicken, beef, all of the meats. I think the green egg would be good for you. Smart. And it seems like Scooter Beach, like you, you really like to do cooking and stuff in the kitchen. So I think you would so enjoy it. A large, get a large. And yeah, get a large. Never, like don't get anything smaller than that. I think it would be a waste. Uh, no, they don't tend to do large cuts of meat. A mini max would be great for two people. Okay, yeah. But don't get the medium because that's a waste. Okay. Hi Dust, how are you? As well as cash money. Okay, do our flip flip. Large is great for two to four people. Yeah. An extra large is great for eight to twelve people. You have the green egg and you love it. Nice. I love hearing that. I'm going to try what size do you have? and go a little bit bigger with this first one. Yeah, delicious. Bagels. Nice. So excited for bagels today. Oh, you're gonna get one for your hubby's B day? Yes. Cash money, what's your favorite thing you've made on the egg so far? Flip, flip, seal it up. Your favorite thing is a whole chicken. We just did chicken yesterday on stream. Good morning, Jen. How is your weekend going? Hey, Jen, we're making all things that you can eat today. I suppose this is like a little bit of a vegetarian or pescatarian menu. Yeah, yesterday, not only did we do one chicken, we did four. <laughs> you uh, check out my Instagram story. Yep. London broil, nice. Just came back from a walk with Woth. Yeah, bagels and locks are heaven. You had to work in the office yesterday? What did you think of the VOD, Scooter Beach? This is getting a bit sticky. Hey, Heat. Good to see you today. Thank you. I'm feeling like very springy today. It's cold in Toronto. Oh, we have really nice weather here. It's supposed to stay nice too. Which is good for the garden. Pizza mom? Or pizza mom X? Thank you for the follow. Epic. If I'm ever a mom, I wish I would be a pizza mom. We should do a garden to our stream. So since it is going to stay like really nice 
in the next weeks here is we will be doing gardening streams is we just kind of got it set up. It snowed in Calgary and Winnipeg. Yeah, that's the shit I don't miss. Oh, you're going to make the chicken this week. Scooter Beach. I think you're like one of the top viewers that like keeps making all this stuff I make on stream. That makes me feel so good. Like that's really what I want to achieve here is just to inspire you guys to make some new different stuff at home. And hopefully I make it a little bit less scary or intimidating for you. And yes, for those of you who have never had locks is we will be doing a little bit of a history lesson on locks. So have no fear. We will be learning about that. Do I ever fillet and cook fish on stream? Yes. Yes, I do. It is I'm currently waiting to get out and go fishing at some point here is I absolutely love to do that. And yeah, typically you'll see stuff from like start to finish made by from scratch here. So today the salmon's already been cured for the locks. And that salmon was from the last time that I went fishing. I caught a really nice spring salmon. So I cured it with salt and sugar and dill for that one. That one's a little bit uneven, but that's fine. And it takes about three to four days. And then you rinse it off and you have like a preserved salmon. The only thing is people that don't like the texture of like raw fish are probably not gonna like lox. Yeah, I love to fillet my own fish. I don't know if you can see up here though, this red knife is my fillet knife for fish on stream. Is stream actually bought that one for me. It's easier than having to plan the menu for all the days. Yeah, it's like if you guys were smart, you would just steal my menu and be like, okay, that's what we're eating this week. <laughs> Brilliant. You love lox dust? Yes. It's pretty expensive though to buy in the store. And it's not expensive to make. Yeah, and it's very inexpensive to make for yourself. It just takes time. That's good. And not even the time that you do stuff, it's just time in the Yeah, it's just time in the fridge. What were you doing? Dropped off the fish. Oh. You looked like you were sneaking. Yeah, Suzanne, I will do that and steal your menu. Holy. Your last ex didn't and couldn't cook creatively. If avocados were five bucks, she'd buy them because she ate the same thing all the time. So boring, but you know what? I think everyone, like so many people eat like that. And that's why they kind of get like stuck in these, like, I don't know, ruts with food. and smooth that out a bit more. There we go. So 
sometimes you put the foot down and cook chicken wings <laughs> on a Friday night. Erin, you do a black box challenge every time you go to the grocery store. That enjoy tonight stuff is gold. Yeah. How, how was the buds last night? Tasty. Yeah, Scooter Beach. So that's the thing is like eggs are so versatile if you really want to do more than just smoking with your grill. The attachment's on already? So I'm going to do one more roll here. And I will also say that the Pizza Porta, the owner of the company, really great guy, is we've been in touch on Instagram since we've purchased ours. And yeah, he's just been super helpful with being able to use it. Really nice guy. He also invited us like down to go visit him if we're ever in the area. I forget where he's at though. Somewhere in the States. Who's your favorite chef? Favorite chef? Probably Ramsey. Probably Ramsey. Just because he really does know his stuff and he doesn't mess around. That's who I am in the kitchen. So, check out this nice board full of our bagels. Yeah, facts. Exactly. Okay, so now I think we'll do 10 more minutes because some of these have already been sitting for five minutes. So 10 more minute timer and then I will turn on our boiling pot for these and we can start boiling them. Quick peek outside to the grill since we have a little time. So the grill is heating up, the pizza porta is in. Sammy, what's your update? It's at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. We need it to get up about 150 degrees more. So up to 450 Fahrenheit. But it's just chugging along there. The UK version of Kitchen Nightmares was awesome because he actually helped turn the business around. Yeah, yeah. When he actually <laughs> helped rather than just yelling. Hey Siri. 10 minute timer. Okay, your timer is set for 10 minutes. Yeah, there's your baby. He's definitely playing a character on the US version. I believe that too. The UK people wouldn't stand for that though, if he did that on the UK show. They'd be like, they would know he's being fake. English people know. Turn this on, medium high heat. And then I'm gonna get out some semolina or cornmeal. So we use that on the bottom of the bagel. After it comes out of the boiling water, we put the bottom of the bagel onto the semolina and then that will help it to not stick onto the baking stone. Durham wheat semolina. So I'm just gonna keep that over here. I'm gonna move our bagels too. Do this. They're warm. And then do that one. Have I ever seen the show Barbecue Pitmasters? We've never watched it, but it is on Netflix, right? It is on Netty. And then the other thing while we're waiting, get together your topping. 
So we're going everything bagel spice, but I also do have some like separate poppy seeds and sesame seeds if you wanted to do something different. Oh, and it's on YouTube. That's cool. So keep that on deck as well. And now, unless you're thinking of a different one, probably not. Okay, let's do a little bit of locks history and info. So for many American Jews and for many Americans in general, lox is the luscious topping to their Sunday morning bagel and schmear. The schmear is the generous serving of cream cheese. Never go small on the schmear. Lox is always made from salmon as and is very expensive. In this regard, it's different from many other iconic Jewish foods, which are made from ingredients that are easy to acquire and cheap. The place near you makes jalapeno cheddar bagels and they're amazing. I believe that. That's such a good combo. I used to get those when I was young. So while lox may be delicious, the term is quite confusing. What we now call lox, derived from the German word for salmon, is in fact smoked salmon. True lox is brined in a salty solution, which cures the fish, but also leaves a stronger salty taste. Today, lox is cured with a light salting and then cold smoked, which provides the typical Nova smoked salmon flavor. But like for the most part, lox is not smoked. Let's just let that be known that ours is not smoked. It's just been cured with salt, sugar, and dill. And the dill does impart the flavor into the salmon. It's really nice. The word lox is now used interchangeably with smoked salmon and the most popular Sunday morning items sold at Zabar's in New York City, over 2,500 pounds per week. But it's not actually real lox, it's smoked salmon. So it doesn't actually take as long to make the smoked salmon variation. Have I ever thought about teaching in culinary school? Yeah, I think I'll do that like down the road when I'm a little bit older and maybe want to like deal with kiddos and stuff because yeah, I love to teach people how to cook. And I think I would be a good culinary instructor because I wouldn't teach people wrong. Okay, the YouTube one is Barbecue Pit Boys. Yeah, can we teach next week? We teach every week. We're live on Twitch, plus it's free. Okay, so unfortunately, lox has become an even more complicated issue with current fishing trends. As wild salmon becomes increasingly scarce, the use of salmon farming has increased dramatically. Over 80% of salmon sold in the U.S. comes from farms. <sighs> I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> Which raises health and sustainability issues. And that was documented in 2003, so it's probably changed. So, yes, my salmon today is wild. I caught it myself with my guns. When I caught that spring salmon, it was about 25 pounds as well. So it was not a small fish. Hey, that was good little history. It's so cool. I caught it myself. Yeah. So like the guy that we've been cooking for, Zach, our friend, that's who takes me out fishing. So the thing that we have is I get my fishing license. So by law, I am able to fish in the waters here legally. And then they just take me out on the boat. They don't ask for gas money or anything like that. It's a wonderful little trade. Feel very blessed to have that at my disposal. Always make friends with someone with a boat if you live by the water. Oh. 
old timey trading. I know. I know the f like the fact that this whole pandemic is like pushing us more towards the barter system now. My favorite. Our water is almost there. And well, we only have two minutes left before we start boiling our bagels. Yeah, Sammy, he loves going out on the water. No. <laughs> that was the fish. Good job, Salmon. Okay, how many potatoes do we need for our potato pancakes today? Old fashioned latkes. So two kilograms, about seven large. Two kg. I'm gonna weigh those out. And that's what the recipe said. It said use russet potato. Perfection. All of them. That'd be so many latkes. And today we're making latkes all day. From 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. <laughs> There's the pile. Potato pile. Your family has pushed you to go to culinary school, but you just want to cook at home. You've never wanted to be a chef or anything like that. You just love to cook at home. You may cook way too much every day, but being a chef is too much work. You are right in saying that is yeah go to culinary school if you love to cook is a lot of my class when i went is like a lot of people did not want to become a chef they just wanted to learn how to cook properly so i mean i guess if you can afford that go for it but there's also like continuing education classes that a lot of community places or community halls host, or even some colleges host that you can buy that are not as expensive. But that's also the thing is like, if you just like to cook at home, I would not suggest becoming a chef and working in a restaurant because you will not be happy. Because cooking at home, way different than cooking in a restaurant for hundreds of people every day. Okay, Sammy, I'm going to check to see what our grill is at or our oven is at. And then I think we can start boiling our bagels. I'm just going to pop a lid on this to bring it up. Strike none agrees and strike none is in the baking side of things. Yeah, consider this. So strike none came into chat yesterday saying that the person they left in charge over the weekend messed up all of the baked goods for the day. So strike none got called into work, did like three shifts yesterday just to fix someone else's issue. So like that's what happens when you work in a food service industry. If you hold the responsibility, 350. Okay, so a little bit more still. If you hold all that responsibility for said like restaurant or bakery is you will have no life. <laughs> Okay, so oven is at 350 Fahrenheit. We need 100 more degrees. So I'm not gonna start boiling just yet. I'm gonna start reading through our latka recipe though. So 
So we're gonna start by shredding our potatoes. And then we're gonna wrap it in cheesecloth. And then we're gonna twist all the water out of it. And I'm guessing we're not peeling the potatoes, right? You love to bake cakes and cookies with lots of Dana TV butter. <laughs> what? Okay, so shred our potatoes, get the water out of them. And then we mix eggs in and flour until we form patties that just stick together in our hands. And then we also need to salt them at that point. And then we just start shallow frying them in a cast iron skillet. You made these this morning, wake up, from the same recipe? And how did they turn out? <sighs> guys are making me look bad right now. Also, did you have the matzo meal or did you use AP flour? Oh, you broke your lettuce spinner this morning, grabbing a pan, RIP lettuce spinner. Potato latkes with applesauce. Never done it, but I think it'd be delicious cookie. You've, oh, you had the matzo meal, dang it. Well, I guess we'll see how these turn out. Seems like a very tough job being a chef bonkman. Oh yeah. They don't get paid enough. Let's just say that. They do not get paid enough, but neither do all of the cooks that are like putting in the most work every day. We are almost there. True, yeah, it's such a problem. You know what though, cash money? My lettuce spinner has like a crack in it too. I don't know what I did one day. It's like cracking though. She's on the fritz as well. <laughs> Nike. <laughs> Sammy loves going out on the water. So yes, on dog, he is not yet my husband. That will be done on June 20th. He's my fiance, yes. What does he do? So we work together when the world is not in a pandemic is we work for my dad's like handyman restoration company. But Omdog and I did meet working as cooks in a kitchen. So that's how we met. So he has 15 plus years under his belt. I have nine plus. But right now we both do the same thing because we're inseparable. Cookie, you were making some sourdough dinner rolls, but did I hear you made super large bagels? I mean, I misportioned them. So instead of 12, we have 11, but they don't look really big. So I'm actually kind of happy that I misportioned them. because I feel like they would have been too small otherwise. Yeah, wait, this om dog? Yeah, this om dog. That's the bearded man that you'll see roaming around. And you'll also see him come in once I played up and start eating all the food too. It's great. Being a chef seems like being a teacher, work all the time for a little pay and you have to enjoy what you do. Yeah, it's like, wait a sec, this seems like a trap. The thing for me though is like going into culinary school, I didn't want to become a head chef of a restaurant. That was never my goal. Holy. Welcome in Cash Money Johnson. Please enjoy your ad free viewing. Yeah, Sammy's eyes bring the boys to the yard. How are you, Torino?
<laughs> I was going to get to that. Not this time. <laughs> oh, man. You're still trying to wake up. Pop that on the side. I'm going to take like a 30 second bathroom break and then we're going to come back and start boiling our bagels. Okay. I'm back. Can you go to culinary school after getting the head chef title? <laughs> Why would you? Yeah, Sammy cooks. He's the pit master. You like to keep it separate. Okay, what's the tempo out there? Just waiting for a little bit more burbles. We are talking about a, well, American barbecue style food truck. That's what we want to do because that's not really a thing up here in Canada yet. What are you thinking, cash money? Also, Take a peek at those. Texas barbecue style or just a rotating regional style? Well, I mean, Texas barbecue is what we have been focusing on. And honestly, I don't feel like we should cook any other kind until we've eaten and tried it and know how to replicate it. That's the other hard part is because that style of barbecue is not really a thing here in Canada, is we're just kind of going off of what we know. But I mean, so far so good from all of the people that we have fed the barbecue to is they've always loved this stuff. Yeah, we'll have to do a tour, that's the plan. Obviously, once the pandemic's over, you can make a barbecue plate like we did a few weeks ago. You think our truck would be successful? Oh, okay. I was just eyeing up that platter. I almost posted it on Instagram today, Dust. I'll show you. Like that one? That was our mixed grill platter that Sam and I made for my birthday. So brisket, sausage, ribs, pork shoulder, chicken, cornbread muffins, slaw. So good. <laughs> yes, that one. <laughs> Cash 
Cash money, you're thinking taco truck or a burger chicken sandwich truck? Yeah, sandwiches are great. That's the thing is you gotta keep it simple. Focus on like one thing. You live in the South in America, you have the best part or the best barbecue. Do you mind me asking what part or what state? Okay, I am dropping a few bagels in there. Oh no, they're really sticky. I'm a little bit worried. Might try and use a little spatula. Get them off this board. So whenever I am boiling bagels, I like to do it for about 30 seconds aside. I really don't go for a long boil time. I'm gonna stick with the four and then I'll get a sheet pan set up. On the other side over here, with our semolina. Do the flip. I will say like the way that this dough is looking, it's not the smoothest bagel dough I've ever worked with. Wasn't quite as dense, so. I'm gonna say that these will probably be really nice and fluffy. North Carolina, what? Pardon me? Nice. Pollen outside? It's allergy season. Oh, the green egg is turning yellow? Okay, so I just sprinkled a nice even amount of semolina over that. And now take these guys out. Right onto our semolina tray. I've never been anywhere that actually serves great barbecue. Yeah. But I think I make some good barbecue. <laughs> and now Pop this on here, show you guys how I season it. Oh, start shaking our bagel spice while it's still a bit tacky and that way it'll stick properly. There we go, friends. Smells so good already. Yeah, super sticky dough, crazy. You got 450? Okay. I will give these to Sammy Man then. Really quickly. Going outside. Go, go, go. Since we just dropped those other ones in. I think that'll be enough at a time, right? Four. I'll do my little bagel flip in here.
Holy. That is smoky out there. It looks so complex. It is a little bit to get it to work properly. like you right now Nike fire in the hole oh hell yeah go Sammy go beautiful okay Launching bagels. We're gonna do this one. I think you should just take the wooden platter there. So I have three more bagels to boil here. helps to have a little bit of a wet hand when picking up the raw dough. Do you know the bagel boss? Hass? Hess from Boston? I do not. I do not know. Yep, everything bagels I shot. So good. He's sneaking a peek. Okay, these guys are ready to come out. Looking it's looking good. Yes. It's looking good. It better be, because there's a lot of love that got put into these bagels. Dress our last three. A 
And then I suppose we should get some like cream cheese and stuff out for dressing said bagel. So I'm gonna bring these all outside now for Sammy. I think he can keep firing them as they come out. I can only do what I do. Something's on fire? <laughs> oh no. Okay. He's smoking up the neighborhood. I guess he had a little flare up. So you just had to take those out. The flames are creeping up on the side of the pizza stone. Okay, I'm gonna start getting oh, cream cheese, some capers, dill, our lox. Those pickle red onions that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, relic, wood-fired bagels. Oh, look at those flames coming up the side. But they aren't really touching the bagel. Interesting. Okay, capers. Got some nice dill. Onion. <laughs> the best part of this is that we don't eat, like Sammy doesn't even know we're watching him right now. I don't know why it's doing that though. I think he's making it worse. You just get it ripping too much or what do you think happened? No, I could see the flames. Okay. Why do you think that happens? Probably something that was inside of it last time that we cooked. It okay. Might be a little more fat. Okay. So it's not completely cleaned out. Okay. She's flaring up. Yeah, a bit of a fire. So. This is the best part, is we can switch to latkes while we wait. So that's what we're gonna do. So recipes. Are linked there, so the first one is the latke recipe I'm using. So we need two kilograms of russet potatoes and we're going to start shredding those potatoes. And then it says to use some cheesecloth to help strain the excess moisture out of the potato. So let's also prep that at the same time. This is what I use. You're off to go for a run. Good job, Jen. Can't run very far, so I'm sure I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Have fun. Enjoy the nice weather.
we'll do two of these little cheesecloth bundles. That should be lots and lots. And then we're getting a little workout, I guess. Get that grating arm ready. This cheesecloth is a whole lot more tight knit. So that's where, if we look here, the weave 44 by 36, I think that's what they're saying, or it's the grade 90. I really have no idea what discerns each cheesecloth, but that's where I think would be the differences. And now, do this into a pretty large bowl. Yeah, you just use a dish towel. That's the other thing you can totally use. If you have a dish towel that you are not super attached to, you can use that. I mean, you could always wash it out after. So it says, after we shred every two or three potatoes, wrap sheets or wrap it in the cheesecloth and then twist it until the water comes out and we're reserving said water that's coming out of the potatoes. So we'll get a little bowl for that as well. Kind of get my little station here. That's our cheesecloth opened up in half. So that's where I'll put my shredded potatoes. Let's do this. You'd say that the grade, if you'd have to guess, 44 by 36, right? That's how big the sheet actually is. Yeah, I are scrub. I. I'm also just gonna give a little rinse on all of my potatoes because I can feel a touch of dirt on the outside, which I am not planning on eating today. Also, just give your potatoes a little once over before you start grating. Just clean up any parts of the potato that maybe look not so good. Extinction, how are you? Yeah, we're doing good out here. And yeah, we're staying safe. Hope the same for you. 
Trey Bear. Thank you so much for the four months, my dude. Hope you and the fam are well. Flinging potatoes at myself here. Oh, that's what I was supposed to do. Give my potatoes the, the once over. If there's any not so nice pieces. You were trying to lurk yesterday, Polish, but the interwebs were terrible. I think some other people were having issues as well. The chicken and everything turned out so good. There's just something about like charcoal and chicken. That's such a good combination. And I loved like the spicy, creamy green sauce it got served with. Still keeping an eye on Sammy outside. He hasn't, oh, maybe he did put the original four bagels in, back into the oven now. Okay, so that was our first two potatoes. So it says every two or three potatoes, put the mixture into your cheesecloth and then start straining the water out. I'm gonna switch up my little setup here. Cause I wanna mix the latkes in this big bowl. So I'm gonna keep grating in there. Do our little twisty twist. Yeah, check Sammy's Instagram story for delicious chimkin vids. So now we're gonna gather this up, all of our corners, give it a twist. The bagels have been fired again. Look at that. You are disappointed with your Piri, chi Piri Piri chicken. You should try the Serious Eats recipe, Polsh. That rub, so good. So look at all that water we just got out of the potatoes. So that's what's gonna make the potato pancakes fall apart. Yay, yay. yay dust! Nine months. Red knife. Yeah, red knife. Nine months together, dust? Oh my goodness. Oh yes, it is a child. What's the name of the food, baby? Okay, now all we gotta do is put our cheesecloth back in our little bowl there. Yeah, what should we name it? <laughs> I don't know. I asked you. Think it'll be a while before you try it again? It was a little bit much effort for the low return on investment. Yeah, try the Serious Eats recipe next time. It's it's really simple. Yeah, what's the name of the baby? The baby. We will name it. <laughs> I'm trying to think something funny. Yeah, Samuel. Samuel, because Sam is actually not a Samuel. He's just a Sam, but we've made him into a Sammy. Am 
My stomach's growling. Yeah, the Sama. Sama. Yeah, if it's a girl, we'll name it Potato. <laughs> Oh, I need to get these outside views for a sec. Outside Sama views. Oh, the bottom of those are looking good. Potato. <laughs> Potato. Next. Sammy is the pit master. He really is. He's not scared of fire. When you, the recipe you use polish had way too much acid for your taste. That sucks. Yeah, that recipe that we used only had like a little bit of vinegar. The horseradish. I mean, I wasn't really planning on having any horseradish today. Is that usually a thing with bagels or with the latkes? How's it going, Sana? Good. Okay. Just finishing this one potato and then how are the first ones? Okay. So now put that back into our straining area. Back into the cheesecloth. This is going to be latkes for the entire neighborhood. So I think some of the vapor from the last wok fry that we did in the large. Yeah. It was just for our wings. I haven't really used it since then. Yeah. So some of that fat was in the side of the egg when it hit 500 degrees and it finally ignited. Yeah. And it ended up causing a little bit of a grease fire. Made sense. Yeah, I don't hear the neighborhood complaining. They better not. If they were smart though, they'd like follow their nose. You can eat horseradish for Passover as a bitter herb. Oh, amazing. Yeah, if you have like any Jewish food history to share in chat, guys, please feel free. Cause I am not Jewish of my heritage. I am Polish and Ukrainian though, so close, but not quite the same. Okay, so more water strained out. Put our potatoes in here. We only have four more potatoes to do. Just the thing is, is potatoes oxidize really quickly, meaning they turn brown after we shred them. So it is smart to kind of do this all at once here. Are we celebrating Easter? Yeah, we're deep frying a turkey on stream tomorrow. You only did half of the recipe. I should have. This is going to be so much. That's okay though. This is a good thing for leftovers. I find and reheat them. 
You're gonna have ham, yes. It says it was only supposed to make 16 latkes. You had a lot and you even made them large. Oh man. Nice. You make latkes for an hour straight, Anuris? In the end, one pan-sized latke. <laughs> okay, that's what we'll do for our last one. One epic latke. Sammy's taking bagel photos outside in the sun. Yeah, go big or go home. Well, we're all at home, so. <laughs> Go big when you're at home. Go big, stay home. <laughs> I don't know. I think we might just have to message Zach and be like, do you guys want some potato pancakes? Probably wouldn't say no. Grating the onions, I know. We cannot skip that step. I'm gonna grate a whole white onion. I gotta stop there. It's so crazy how potatoes just like rust. Like they literally just go rusty. Yeah, good thing we're outside. Wait, are they literally rusting? I mean, pretty much. It's oxidizing once the air hits it. Oh my gosh, Pulsch. You're having turkey wrapped or bacon wrapped turkey? <laughs> turkey wrapped bacon? Opinion on iceberg? Yeah, the worst thing ever. Waste of vegetable fiber. <laughs> That's my opinion on iceberg. Yeah. There's no nutrient value. I don't see the point in it. Spring mix or bust. Even that's not my favorite because I find it goes bad really quick. It's a really interesting latka recipe that we're saving the starchy water and then we're letting the starch fall to the bottom of the bowl and then you pour off the water and then add the potato starch back in. It's pretty cool. I think we should do a cheese pizza Starch on starch violence.
Now it's only violent if we grate our finger. And so far, so good. No violence, please, today. Gluten-free version, yeah, use potato flakes to bind. What a great option. Brilliant. Okay, spread out our pink cheesecloth. <laughs> our nicely dyed cheesecloth. Oh, how do you get this great color? Potatoes. Why not hold it with a cloth? Then your fingers are always safe. Because I like to live dangerously, I guess. I mean, we've got bagels on bagels. Bagels on bagels on bagels on bagels. Yeah, especially with the mandolin. So whenever I use a mandolin, I have a cut proof glove that I wear. That is something I do. Yes. So that's what the recipe said, was to use a food processor if you had access to one. Way quicker. Okay. Last thing is our onion. Just gonna use a small onion here. Let's use this guy since it's already like half peeled for us. It's also not looking the best. Yuck. I have them here. I want to use this one up. Okay, next. Keep going. How much of culinary school is on hand cooking versus in classroom stuff? I would say it is 75% on hand and 25% classroom. Now you would spend most of your time in the kitchen. And the way that my full-time program was set up is you're in school from like 7, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's your day. Oh, yeah, it's getting me. I'm crying already. Oh my goodness. Oh, I gotta walk away. <laughs> I can't see. It burns. It really hurts. Okay? No, it's not okay. You're not okay? Put a mask. <laughs> Guys. He's laughing at me. Oh my gosh. <sighs> It's she's about a, to drop. She's a glass oh, man. of emotions. <laughs> like, Are you okay? <laughs> and now, if you're not crying by this point, you can just use kosher salt to season your potatoes. But if you are crying, use your tears.
I'm stopping here. <coughs> oh no. I'm not crying, you're crying. Okay, but seriously, I am gonna go blow my nose and wipe the tears off my face and then we're gonna come back to this. Give me like a minute to bring myself together. Hey, I'm here. I'm back. Okay, what do we do with the onion? So collect water in a bowl, squeeze all the potatoes until dry, transfer potatoes to a large mixing bowl along with our diced onion. Should I squeeze out onion too? I think so. I'm just gonna squeeze onion into sink. I don't think we wanna reserve that liquid. And then I think we should uh, give our cutting board a wipe, hey? Okay? Clean up our mess a bit. And then once we get our latka mixture mixed up, then we'll do our bagel stuff. Have a little bit of something to eat to hold us over while we're cooking our latkes. Cheese cloth compostable? Probably not, right? We made a mess. What's up? Oh. Cheesing cake. Wipe, hype. It'll splatter town, yeah, if we put all this wet stuff into the oil. Big time. Big time, big time. Oh my goodness. Remember our molten pozole volcano? <laughs> Typical volcanoes, yeah. red. This one was green. Wow, I've never seen green lava before. This is new. Oh, smoked cheese on the bagel. There's our starchy water, our potatoes. Just getting one more wipe here. So seriously, potato shrapnel everywhere. Yeah. 
you want it. Yeah, all of the above. Okay, let drained potato water sit undis undisturbed until a pool of brown water forms on top of a slurry of potato starch. Carefully drain off water, then mix starch into potato and onion mixture with your hands. Mix in eggs one at a time. So we need four eggs, alternating with a quarter cup additions of matzo meal or flour. We need the gluten here to hold everything together. So I'm gonna go drain this off in the sink. And it's seriously just all poured off. So all the water poured off and then this is at the bottom of the bowl, like a sludge. So look at this, like this is me trying to pour this. To me, like this is cornstarch, look at that. It's like hard and then it goes liquid. Crazy. <laughs> Get it out of the bowl. It'll eat your clothes if you let it sit. Yeah, that's why I did not use a dish towel. Like, look at this. So look, it's hard, but watch. It's going liquid. This is my first time kind of working with this. Holy Sammy. Hello from Denmark, welcome in. This is from the potatoes, yeah, dust. So that's gonna be part of the binder. So I'm just getting this mixed up salmon and then we'll do our bagels. Those turned out great. Oh my goodness. So we're just trying to evenly mix that starch throughout this. Look up non-Newtonian fluids and it'll explain what the potato starch is doing. Yeah, I used to do the, like, the same thing with corn starch. Play around with it. Okay, looks good. It's starting to stick to my hands, so I know that we've added the starch back in. And then we also, I think it's a wise idea to get a sprinkle of salt on here too. Eggs, flour, salt. BRB.
Sammy's gonna be my flower person after this. We are gonna get messy. Look at this yolk. So you want like somewhat of an even mix every time. Yeah, it's going to get really sticky. I might need more eggs than it calls for. Mmm. That's a wood-fired bagel. There's that yolk. It's like super chewy on the outside and then yeah, the inside is so soft. Has some nice char flavor. Mmm. But don't worry guys, we're gonna show you the bagels once we have this mix. About a quarter cup, a quarter cup. Thank you. Sammy just fills the whole cup measure. A quarter cup. Is the bagel recipe in Discord? Yep. It's not my recipe though, it's from King Arthur Flour. And it is also posted in the recipe command here on Twitch in chat. It's in both spots. Those are some crazy, like, yolky yolks. Yolky yolks. Those are fantastic. Even if you can't wood fire them, throw them in your oven. Yeah, it's will still be so good if you bake them in the oven. I think these latkes are going to be unreal. Next. There's so much flavor. The bagels? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The bagel boss? I can't click that right now because I got latka hands. But maybe Sammy can check on it. She's got those latka hands. This is definitely getting there. Maybe one more egg and one more sprinkle of flour. Because if we form it, eh, it just, just needs one more. Okay, Sammy, one more, one more. last flower. And then just do a little bit more than you did last time. Okay. And then if you could also just sprinkle a little bit more salt too. That should be perfect. Michelangelo, we opened up your link there on Sam's browser. We'll watch it after stream. Sammy says the first part was funny though. Okay, so kind of like knead your potato mixture 
Make sure it all feels the same too. That's why I think it's really important that we do mix this with our hands. So see how it's more going creamy? Now that we added that last little bit of stuff. So like if I push down on this, it's all one uniform thing. And then make a quick little pancake. Should be able to flip it without it falling apart. Perfect. So now to keep this from oxidizing anymore before we start cooking these is I'm just gonna put a plastic film right onto the surface of this and that way the air can't make it turn color anymore. Even though it's pretty much already as brown as it'll get. So definitely working good without the matzo meal, at least. Cause I wasn't sure how that was gonna work. There we go, friends. Kind of looks like mealworms. Oh no. <laughs> Makes you want to try it, Posh. No, there's nothing crawling on it, you guys. Trying to get me. Y'all can't get me like that. Okay, so Sammy's Channel Point Redemption, AKA Omdog. He requested fresh everything bagels with lox and cream cheese and maybe some latkes to go with. So here we go. We have our fresh everything bagels. Get one quick photo of those since they look so beautiful on this platter right now. And we just have to slice up some locks. We have our cream cheese here. We have capers, dill, pickled red onion. You're at 1K or 11, oh, you're 11K away from redemption. Thanks, Lieberton. There you go. Okay, we'll just post those to the side. We got our cream cheese. We got our capers that we got to open up. Yeah, now we have something for breakfast for the week or lunch. Bagels are great for lunch too. Our dill. And then our Pickled onions, our little jar. And then the locks. So 
Well, you guys remember last time we sliced lox, right? So I gave it a little smell this morning. This is the same stuff. So you can see how it kind of like oxidizes once you slice it off the skin. So I'm gonna slice this in half down here just so we can get some nicer pieces. But this is a cured piece of fish. So yes, it should last in your fridge for minimum one week. I'll show you guys how to like trim it up. So I, oh, I guess it's gonna split there. I was gonna trim off that part of the skin. Gator pick. Yes, thank you, Palsh. The recipe is in Discord and it's also on our recipe command. I'm gonna slice this part. Actually, I'm gonna just try and slice that in one whole piece and then in this way. So, I kind of like to go on an angle and then we want to get this as thin as possible. One thing I'm going to say guys, since the last time that we sliced this, it's gotten more like tacky and it's not falling apart as much as the last time. I'm able to slice it thinner in these nice little pieces like that. How's it going, Buff Bagel? Yes, my dude. That's for you. We got Buff Bagel. Yeah, we got a bagel in chat right now. How have you been, Buff? You holding up over there or what? These little pieces of locks. Just wanna snack on them. I'm holding back though. I wasn't going to, but I can. Sam wants it mixed in the cream cheese. Well, then why am I focusing on slicing it so nice? Okay. This Walsh walks into a bar. <laughs> yeah, am I gonna be part of a punchline? Walsh? The Welsh. You've been confusing King Arthur flower with Robin Hood flower for like six months. <laughs> Polsh. Yeah, I know, we can't get King Arthur here in Canada. Saddest thing ever. Okay, I'm stopping slicing really perfectly there. Sam said he wants a little bit of the lox mixed into the cream cheese. That's an option in some Jewish delis. I remember it was on one of the bagels that Dark Elvin brought to us when we were in New York our first morning. Palsh is a Walsh. This Polsch Walsh walks into a bar. <laughs> I 
Yeah, Ivan, I hope he's okay. I know. We haven't heard from him since like last weekend. So I'm taking all of our nice little slices off, just putting it onto the plate. And that'll be for one bagel. And now we can come in with our chef's knife. Trim the rest of this locks off of the skin. Things have been crazy for you for the past couple of weeks. Yeah, hope everyone's doing good. I know, man. I know. I'm gonna do like that much. Just turn your knife. Slide that off and now I'm just gonna put that. Now I still have a little bit of Gravlax. Okay, so I'm just gonna cube this up to make some lox cream cheese. So we'll just slice it and then dice it. A lox schmear. Hey Taz, how are you? Yeah, coffee cured salmon. That was a really, really good one, Buff. I'm so happy we tried that one. Welcome back, Jen. Yeah, once we got the grill under control, all of the bagels baked up, no problem. And we did taste test one, super yum. So now I'm just dicing up some of the locks to put with some cream cheese, capers, dill, pickled red onions. Bagels. Howdy, scat. How's the day? Are you working? Okay, rinse your knife right away. Otherwise, this will like petrify onto it. Capers are key. Yeah, you need the briny and saltiness to cut through the fatty salmon, hey? Okay, let's get a little bowl out. You can mix up this salmon schmear. Yeah, you're being a really good essential muppet. Well, you can put as little or as much of the locks into the schmear that you want. I'll definitely make a little bit extra for us. This is something that I think will stay good in the fridge for at least a few days after we mix it.
And we shouldn't have to add like any seasoning because the lox is already seasoned. I think the only thing I will add is maybe some cracked pepper. I think that'd be yummy. Some black pepper. Give that a little whip up. And that's the thing is it's like totally okay to like mash up the locks into here. And then it kind of colors the cream cheese a little bit too. So it goes more like this peachy pink hue, which I think looks so, so nice. Got him. You know your stuff, Dust. Hi, Annie, welcome in. You've never done it diced and mixed. You just put big pieces on top of cream cheese and bagel. Yeah, so I sliced some scat and then I did a schmear because Sammy was asking for a little schmear. Mmm. That's really good. A little bit of like salmon nuggets in there. F yeah. Couple variations. Might as well. Thanks, Cookie. My favorite place in Van to get fresh seafood, I would say finest at sea. That's what we used at the restaurant there. And then we also use finest at sea here on the island. They support like all local and sustainable fisheries. So that would be my go-to spot. I'm going to choose this guy looks like really perfect. Yeah, it's on Granville Island, Jen. So probably pretty easy for you to get to. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Scat. You're eating your lunch early. Okay, so let's slice our bagel in half. I think that was a pretty even slice. Check out all those holes. Onto the plate. Let's get some of these seeds away. Everything bagels, cinnamon raisin, and poppy seed were your favorite bagels before you had to go gluten-free. Yeah, cinnamon raisin with honey on it. So good. So, so good. Okay, 
One of these is gonna be a straight up cream cheese with lox, and then the other one will be the schmear. We'll do two different little plating techniques, I suppose. Do this one as the schmear. We're going heavy. Because <laughs> honestly, like, I'm not even joking. When you get a bagel in New York, there's like half an inch of cream cheese on it. It's so good. I wish I could eat it. Ah, oh, happy Passover. I'm not Jewish, but happy Passover to you. Thanks for popping in. I'm going to come in with our sandwich spreader. Do our next schmear. That is some thick stuff. I don't like the scalloped edge. There we go. There's literally everything bagel spice everywhere. Are we going to make a face with the bagels? What kind of face? Okay, let's do our plain cream cheese one first. So start layering our little slices of lox. Thought it would look really good if we kind of scalloped it like that. Give me that thick schmear. Maybe a sausage links for the lips and an egg for the nose. <laughs> oh, Annie. Okay, now some color. Let's add some color on the plate. Coming in with our pickled onions first. And these are red onions that have been pickled. Three nice little swirls. Thanks, Denity. And now our capers, if I can get into this jar. So the, the last capers that we were using, you guys remember our little caper chat last week? So those ones were called non perial so those were the smallest. These are not non perial and can you tell the difference in the size? It's like double the size as the ones we were using last week. And because these are bigger is where you have to put a little bit less, otherwise it'll just be too strong, too strong of a flavor. And now, 
So our last little garnish here is just some dill. So really, we can tell that we can get like as fancy or keep it as simple as we want here. I think everyone kind of has their own way of how they like to have their bagels in locks. Whether you like the locks schmear or you like the slices. Go a little bit closer. Hi, Emma. How are you? You worked at a, as a dishwasher at a French restaurant when you were a teen. Occasionally, you had to make the vinaigrette, which called for capers. Nice. Like a French red wine vinaigrette, Annie. Okay, one, one more photo on my end, and then we finally get to taste something today. It was so long ago. Yeah, you can't even remember, right? Maybe I, no, I do want it turned that way. That, we'll get our nice pile of bagels in there. And you use like gherkins or cornichons. Nice. Cornichon. Okay, I want to do schmear one. I want to try schmear one. So, thank you, Cordy64, for the follow. We have a spring salmon dill lox mixed with some cream cheese, some pickled red onions, fresh dill, and some capers. That's really it. And then try and show you without everything falling off. So I got the top piece. So I have all of the seasoning on this. Crack, fresh cracked pepper. So I put some in the schmear already. So I don't want to make it too peppery to start. But I'm going to taste it first and then let's see how I feel. Mm. Those are the chewiest bagels I think I've ever had. It's perfect. The recipe's a win. So I'm getting like all of the nuttiness from all the seeds on top. Obviously a creaminess from the cream cheese. And then the dill, onion, and caper really help to like cleanse the palate. Okay, take, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Yeah, it's kind of smoky dust. It is kind of smoky. That's really good. Bringing me back to New York. I'm in heaven. I don't know where Sammy went. I don't know why he's not tasting his bagel. He says he's coming. 
have I noticed any change in the number of viewers since moving to an earlier time? Mm, I think I've had better viewership with me starting earlier. But I think, I mean, it all kind of depends on each channel. But I, I kind of started to know that I had more of like a European audience a lot. So that's why I started to start earlier. And then, I mean, 11 a.m. my time is like, what, three hours plus on Eastern time. So it just kind of made sense for everyone. It's been really good, yeah. Oh, yeah, killer leftover chimkin sandwiches with these bagels. You can have this one if you want. Okay. 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 I'm gonna keep working away at those as we're working on our latkes. So heat half inch of oil. So I'm gonna use grapeseed oil in a cast iron skillet over medium high heat until a shred of potato dropped in immediately bubbles. Form a small amount of latka mix into a disc, fry on both sides until golden brown to test for seasoning. So we always wanna taste our first one before we keep cooking the rest of them. Cause what happens if we don't taste it, cook them all and it's like, oh, this is like missing something. Not good. So once we have our first one done and we're happy, then we can keep doing the other ones. And I think like your heat on your stovetop when you're cooking the latkes in the pan is really, really important. Like it's as important as when you make a grilled cheese. So we don't wanna brown the latkes too quick where they're gonna be raw in the center still, uncooked potato, not good. But we also don't wanna cook it on too low of a heat where the potatoes are cooked and then the latka is not crisping or browning up on the outside. I guess it is like getting a little bit later in Denmark, hey Dane? That's Sammy's little bagel, cute. Okay, I'm gonna get my pan that's in the oven. <laughs> it's already hot in the oven. Get that heating up with the oil. Then we can start cooking. So half inch of oil, basically just to coat the bottom. It's a shallow fry. Are latkes and boxty the same thing? I cannot currently answer that because I don't know what boxty is. Boxty is a traditional Irish potato pancake. Oh, I suppose it is similar, but not the same same. Cause it looks like this is more of like a mashed potato sort of pancake. Potatoes, milk, salt, egg, flour. Yeah, it contains a mixture of mashed and grated potatoes. Part pancake, part hash brown. Good one, Dust. I learned something new today. Yeah, similar. I mean, a lot of cuisines have their own little potato pancake. Is that yummy? That hits the spot. I can press complete then. Mark as complete.
prosciutto on bagels. Oh, you fancy, huh? Greek, that's how your mom made them, was like half shredded and half not? What? Okay, while our oil is heating up. So, the Jewish latka. So they've been prepared as part of Hanukkah since the mid 1800s based on an older variant of the dish that goes back to at least the middle ages. Latkes need not necessarily be made from potatoes. Prior to the introduction of the potato to the old world, latkes were made in some places from a variety of other vegetable, cheeses, legumes, or starches just depending on what was available locally. Numerous modern recipes call for the addition of ingredients such as onions and carrots. Some people even put like a little bit of sweet potato in, which could be nice. The word latka itself is derived from the East Slavic word ladka, meaning small pancake. Cool. Well, this all just makes sense then, doesn't it? The mashed potato part gets really crispy, but the grated part didn't get as crispy. Annie, you think you had potato fritters with shredded potatoes? Yeah, yeah. These are all options. Okay, switch up our view here. Do that for you guys. Just waiting on this to get a little bit wavy. It's almost there. Yeah, good job baking the bagels. Hey, it was all teamwork today, guys. It wasn't just me, but the bagel recipe worked really good. Really, really good. And yeah, this one is just looks so beautiful. Ladka in India is a sweet dessert made with carrots and milk. What? And lots of sugar. Is it possible to sous vide a potato? Yeah. Some people do their fries like that. <laughs> that was my picture holding face. <laughs> you guys are like, did Kate just die? Hey. It's okay. Oh, you ran hot water? Yeah, you thought Medusa got me. That's what he was doing. That's a crazy bagel face. Really good pick, right? Okay, I'm gonna do a little cleanup. Get our dairy products back into the fridge. Keep them fresh, fresh. They're still waiting just a touch on the oil. That should be the picture on the front of my first cookbook. Ah, Claire, hi Claire. How are you? How is your stream? Can you get a shout out for Claire Coffee Guys? Another wonderful food and drink streamer. Which I'm pretty sure if we lived in the same area, we would be best buds. The Claire and Kate show. 
That's what you guys would have. Too much to handle. <laughs> she is dead. <laughs> what happened? Why are you dead? It was lots of work. How did your cookies turn out? If the virus wasn't there, maybe, yeah. Oh yeah, you should have been. That's right, you guys were taking a trip out here. Lame. <laughs> you made an Easter cookie and it's six hours of work? Yeah, but at least we finished it, right? I'm smelling this oil, so that means we are good to go, I believe. Even though there was no sugar in that dough though. So it was a little bit different than the other doughs I've used. But I can give them latkes instead. Will the wedding still take place? So we're deciding next weekend will be our eight week out mark. I mean, I was supposed to be going to Edmonton. So one province over, we were supposed to be going there for the like two months prior meeting, but that's not happening. So at this point in time, it's not. It is not a go, it will be postponed. Yeah, the Kate and Claire show sounds so good, right? So good. I know, right? I know. It was really funny because someone I went to high school with, they posted on Facebook yesterday. They're like, you want to hear the biggest joke of 2020? <laughs> Having a wedding. I was like, yeah, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> okay, so see how the oil's like wavy dancing? That is how we know. It is at the right temperature. We can still do our little test potato piece. Floats and sizzles right away when we drop it in. And that's all we're really looking for. Just take that out. So I'll do one little test one. And then obviously just be really careful when we put this in because the latka mixture is wet and hot oil is going to make it splash. And I know it looks poopy brown when we put it in, but as we cook it, is it loses that color. Yes, nice relic. <laughs> yeah, wavy dancing. We don't want that poopy brown, but don't worry guys, it goes right away. So it looks like it's browning pretty quickly. So it says you can flip your latkes a couple times as you're cooking it, just to keep it cooking evenly if you notice it's browning too quickly on one side. So my heat's down to a medium temperature now. <laughs> Carol Baskin makes the best latkes. Can we confirm that? Oh, Carol. Does she feed them to the tigers? Yeah, that is confirmed. Thank you, Skull Nomad. Oh, Buff Bagel, we did spatchcock chicken yesterday on stream. One more flip, look at that. K 
Carol. Oh, Carol. You're making it spicy. The spice is nice. This looks pretty good to me. That's definitely crispy golden brown. It looks darker than it is showing up on there. Give that a little drain on the side. Just pop it on my paper towel. And then we'll just let that cool off for a second. And then typically whenever we're frying stuff is it always needs just a little seasoning when it comes right out of the oil. A little pinch of salt. It looks perfect. The sour cream is in the fridge. <laughs> it's staying cool. Thank you, Relic, for the hundred bitties. Yeah, or applesauce. Sounds good, Claire. Yeah, I'll be at that point in a little bit here. Okay, break this. We'll go in half. Make sure everything's cooked inside. I'm gonna take this little piece. Yeah. That is the one. So crispy on the outside. Potatoes are nice and moist on the inside. It's really hot. All right, let's do, I think I'll do five so that we can plate them all together with some sour cream and eat it. Then we want to make all of our latkes the same size. They'll cook at the same time. So I'm going for like little small kind of appetizer sized ones. want to go relatively quick as well. Don't dilly dally when you're making your potato pancake. This is just some happiness in a pan. Got my Insta looking so profesh. It looks crisp. Oh, I think, I mean, it's mostly probably my phone. So like the iPhone Pro 11 Max. So it just takes really great photos. And then the other thing, I mean, kind of been trying to up my Insta game over the years is I think I'm on like probably close to year nine or something like that. So the only other thing they say is to kind of like watch how you, like what photos you post so that they all look good together when you scroll on the feed. I am not that good. I mean, I don't have a lot of followers on Instagram. I 
I just like using Instagram to post all those pictures. Okay, flip that. This is looking beautiful. So these were the first ones we put in. That one needs a bit more. Yeah, if you cross your eyes, it looks like you have two full pans of latka. <laughs> yeah, early morning latka. Deadly. Those are holding up really nicely. This is a Passover type of meal, I suppose. So it says that latkes are traditionally prepared for, or prepared for Hanukkah. But then, I mean, we've had some people come in today saying happy Passover. So, I mean, I've never celebrated Passover. I know it's coming, or is it just past? So Passover food. I don't know, it doesn't say latkes on there. I'm gonna check this middle one. Probably getting pretty dark there. Oh no, it actually isn't. Okay, awesome. Turn that heat up just a touch more. Horseradish for sure. Oh, that's what I have to do. Okay, while those are cooking away, just gonna go snip a couple of chivers. Get those buttes. Checky check. Let those keep going. I'm just gonna give these chives a quick little chop here. That's our garnish with the sour cream. Homemade mayo? Yeah, aioli would be good with this too. Yeah, mayo is always great with fried stuff, right? All right, I think these are great to go. Put them onto our towel lined plate.
give it a little sprinkle of salt on each one. It really does need it after tasting the first one. Potatoes, I don't know what it is about them, but they take so much salt to season properly. Oh man, yeah, roasted garlic aioli and no ketchup unless you're like under 10 years old. <laughs> Da, na, na, na. Potato pancakes. Okay, I got my little chives here. I'm gonna let those guys cool off for a second while I grab the sour cream. Gotta get that dollop. with like a pretty big dollop for all of these. Get that nice and smooth. I've never done the applesauce version that some of you were talking about with the latkes. Would that be more for like breakfast or dessert maybe? Yeah, you could totally turn these into a dinner meal with some other type of protein. Eggs. Yeah, eggs and potatoes, hello. That's how I'm plating mine. I don't love how this one's looking. There we go. Okay, so one nice dollop. I'm just gonna do the sour cream right in the center there. Yeah, all fancy like. Thanks Cookie for the thousand bitties. Oh my gosh, we're gonna be done that tomorrow. Maybe a touch more. Just go for the big old sprinkle of chives. Don't hold back. It's really gonna go well with the potato and the cream. And well, if you're anywhere like I am in the world, is yours are popping right now. I can't cut those chives back fast enough. And if you were really bougie and fancy, well then you would put caviar on this, I think. Yeah, Island Farms for the win. You guys get that there, right, Greek? You guys get Island Farms in Vancouver? I think my lens is dirty. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna come in and eat with my hands. Lieberton, there used to be a small stand that sold latkes and kobasa downtown in your city. It was so sad when it closed. Yeah. Oh, a whitefish caviar or sturgeon. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take, why don't I take this one that's like already kind of sauced? This one underneath here. Yes. 
beautiful. Like look at those crispy potato-y edges. Mmm. The little bit of chive on there is perfect. Because the little bit of onion that we put in the latka potato mixture kind of like caramelized when it was frying in the pan. Mmm. So like it's really dense and holding together. There's no way this would fall apart. Mm -mm -mm. And I bet you the smoked salmon schmear or the salmon lox schmear would be so good on this. A little bit of schmear. Oh man. Did I do part mashed, part grated? Yep, we just did straight up grated. Here's the recipe if you wanna check it out. It's the first one posted there. Yeah, I was feeling grateful. That's so tasty. It really makes the potatoes taste like sweet. What are my thoughts on air fryers? I've not used them a ton. I mean, I can understand why they're a thing is for like the healthier aspect of frying, but I think that they kind of like will bust up whatever you put in there because it continually circulates it. So not the greatest. I think if you're gonna air fry, just roast in the oven because it's literally the same thing. And if anyone else has any air fryer stories. I mean, feel free to post that in chat. Okay, we're wrapping stuff up. We did great today, friends. Not as long as our previous streams this week. All right. What are we feeling? Who are we feeling for a raid? So yesterday we went and raided a gamer Oh, we got the Scoozer on. We have Sushi Day, Cosmic Cat. Cadavers is doing pottery. Hitch is on day seven on, of his inhabited island. What are we feeling? Anyone have any recommendations? It can be someone that we've never raided before. Who's this guy? Chef Steve. Smoking rock and roll food truck? Should we do this guy? Chef Steve 330. Hi, Steel. <laughs> You're ready. Tomorrow is Turks Day. Hi, Hoju. That's a high buy. The Sammy Seal of Approval. It's a good one. I think we did Scoozy last week. Let's go do Sushi Day. We haven't seen Sushi and Sun in a bit. Okay, I hit that button, which means I'm gonna go drop you guys off at another wonderful community. We have a lot of overlapping viewers, so most of you are probably not new to this stream. A lot of fun shenanigans happen over there though. Okay. I will see you guys tomorrow, same time as always. And yes, it is turkey day. We got like deep fried turkey going on. We're making a cake, mashed potatoes, and some other delicious things. So see you guys then. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Bye.